Hey friends, happy Saturday to you and welcome to another episode of your favorite web show, Peak Bites. I'm Diego Romo. Today on the program, we'll head out with Summit Meadow Adventures to do some snowmobiling around Deer Valley. We'll get a recap of the awesome matchup between the Jazz and the Orlando Magic that took place a little bit earlier this week. And we'll also fill you in on all things politics and policy today by speaking with Senator Dan Hemmert of Utah County about the upcoming 2019 general legislative session. <laughs> We're just a quick two weeks away from the start of the 2019 legislative session right here in Utah. It will begin on Monday, January the 24th and run through March 14th. In that time, legislators will pour over 800 plus pieces of legislation that will be introduced in the House or Senate and pass upwards of 500 pieces of new legislation within the state. I spoke with Senate Majority Whip Senator Dan Hemmert of Utah County to discuss some of the policy agendas that are taking priority this year. With our population forecasted to nearly double by 2065. Housing is one issue that Senator Hemmert says legislators are keenly focused on. A top priority for state lawmakers is ensuring that as our population increases and housing prices with it, that there is still enough affordable housing to go around for those who need it. So if you're a homeowner right now, uh, you know, you're sitting pretty, your house is probably going to appreciate. If you're trying to get into the market, you're in a tough spot. And we don't want things, we don't want housing to be unaffordable. This is a problem that we deal with extensively right here in Summit County and one that Senator Hemmert says the state will be dealing with for the foreseeable future. That will be a big issue that, that's frankly not just this year. That's going to be something we're talking about for a decade, so if not longer. I just think we're going to be talking about that every year for, into the foreseeable future because it's a huge issue. Be sure to stay tuned to Peak Bites over the next few weeks as we will continue to highlight some of the policy agendas that are taking top priority at this year's general session. With this great winter of snow we've been having, skiing isn't the only thing to do in the Wasatch Mountains. Operated by Deer Valley Resort, Summit Meadow Adventure is located on the beautiful Garf Ranch just eight miles from downtown Main Street. They offer guided snowmobile trips for both groups and individuals through open meadows and wooded forests. Summit Meadows Adventures also has a full inventory of rental equipment, so all you need to bring is a good attitude and a big smile. Our guide was awesome and he took us to this open meadow to get acquainted with the snowmobiles before heading up into the woods for some scenic trail riding. It was my first time ever snowmobiling, but it certainly won't be my last after that experience. For more information and to book your snowmobile trip today, email snowmobiling at deervalley.com. Today marks the 22nd day of the government shutdown, the longest in U.S. history. 800,000 federal employees are currently awaiting their paychecks and have had to undergo extensive periods of unpaid leave, or in some cases, have had to work without pay since the shutdown started in December. I spoke with congressional policy expert Professor James Curry of the University of Utah, who has extensively studied previous shutdowns to get a better understanding of how it affects us right here at home. Professor Curry said that the greatest pressures from the shutdown will unfortunately be felt by Utah's poor and homeless communities. According to Curry, the National Childhood Nutrition Program and the Food Stamps Program will all run out of funding by March, which will put the responsibility of keeping these programs open on state governments. Professor Curry also said that our beloved state parks, which are currently being supported by funds set aside by the Utah state government, will soon lose funding and will have to close if the shutdown continues. This could have dire effects for Utah's economy, as national parks tourism accounted for $1 billion in revenue for the state in 2017. With both congressional parties hunkering down and sticking to their arguments, this shutdown has no real clear ending in sight. We'll continue to follow this shutdown as it happens and keep you posted. The Utah Jazz played their first game of the second half of the season Wednesday night against the Orlando Magic. In a matchup that the Jazz couldn't afford to lose, they found themselves down by 21 points at halftime. With nearly one-third of the team out due to injuries, the Jazz came out super slow in the first half. However, in the third quarter, the Jazz held the Magic to just 12 points while putting up 32 of their own. Most notably, Donovan Mitchell was absolutely electric in leading the Jazz with 33 points, 20 of which coming in the second half alone. The Utah Jazz are back in action tonight in Salt Lake City against the Chicago Bulls at 8 p.m. We'll see you there. The Wasatch Speaker Series is an annual lecture series that brings the world's greatest innovators, thinkers, and leaders right to a Bravenel Hall in downtown Salt Lake City. The series has featured lectures from Madeline Albright, 
Bill Nye the Science Guy, and former U.S. Vice President Joe Biden, to name a few. Coming up next for the series on January the 15th is former FBI Director James Comey. This will be one of the most highly anticipated lectures of the series. Unfortunately, tickets are already sold out for the event, but the series has other greats like Steve Wozniak, co-founder of Apple, and legendary journalist Bob Woodard scheduled for later this year. For more information, head to wasatchspeakers.com. Thank you all so very much for tuning in to today's episode of Peak Bites. I hope you all enjoyed all of our content from this week, and I wanted to remind you that Peak Bites is now showing three days a week, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. So be sure and tune in next week for more great stories and news from around the community. If you can't wait till Tuesday, tune into Park City Television Monday morning at 7 a.m. for Street Views with Conrad Yacobellis, followed by the Mountain Morning Show at 8. As always, follow us on all of our social media at Park City TV. Hope you have a great weekend, and we'll see you on Tuesday.